Good evening, Robert Scribbler. It is May 13th, 2019. Thank you for joining me for another climate change and clean energy video blog. Now for this segment, I'm going to continue my discussion on how climate change impacts hydrology in relationship to new news that has just come out out of NOAA and the National Climate Data Center showing that the past 12 months in the US were the wettest 12 month period on record since record keeping began for the US 124 years ago. And what I'm gonna explain is how climate change is influencing both extreme wet and extreme dry periods in the US. And to point, it is worth noting that the decade of the 2010s has seen some of the driest periods on record for parts of the US and some of the wettest periods on record for parts of the US. This kind of polarization of extremes is exactly something that we would expect from human-caused climate change because as the earth warms for each one degree Celsius, you get about a 7% increase in evaporation and precipitation rates. So on the dry side, you get more intense evaporation, more rapid drying of lands, more intense heat waves, more intense wildfire cycles. And on the wet side, you tend to get more intense and extreme rainfall events and storms that are capable of reaching a higher peak intensity as more moisture and water vapor are flooding up into the atmosphere, which is a major mechanism that fuels storms. Turning to U.S. trends, we find that the present U.S. trend for the past century roughly matches what one would expect in a globe that has warmed by about one degree Celsius, maybe about 1.1 degrees Celsius, because in the US, average precipitation has increased over the past century by about 7%. And that, that roughly equates to the expected precipitation increase you would tend to see as a result of global warming in the range of about one degree Celsius. Now, it's worth noting that this increased precipitation rate does not mean necessarily that the United States is wetter, particularly in its soil overall, because as the earth warms, the rate of evaporation increases as well. So though you're getting more rainfall, you're also getting soils that dry out at a faster rate. You're getting vegetation that dries out at a faster rate. Now, it's also worth pointing out that this heavier rainfall does not occur evenly. It tends to focus in certain areas at certain times. And you also tend to see drying focus in certain areas at certain times. So you can tend to see much more intense rainfall in certain regions and much more intense drought in other regions than the projected 7% increase in evaporation and precipitation would seem to indicate. Now, over the past 12 months, the National Climate Data Center shows both a much warmer than normal U.S. with national average temperatures ranking, uh, you know, as 109 out of 124 for warmest on record and national maximum temperature rankings pretty high as well. And the national minimum temperature rankings ranking in the top five warmest 12 month periods for, for the last 12 months. But most notable is the fact that the past 12 months were the wettest on record, as you can see by this graphic here, record wettest for all of the last 124 years. And looking at the distribution of where it was wet and where it was dry, we find that most of the U.S. was wetter than usual, uh, showing above average precipitation ranks. But with a focus on higher precipitation rates across the central and eastern U.S. And we're going to go into some of the reasons why precipitation was most focused in this region. And, and it, in fact, it is due to 
two major sources, one being a persistent trough pattern, which has dominated the central and eastern US for multiple months, bringing storm system after storm system after storm system, heavy rain, heavy snow events, one right after the other, right after the other, through a, a large chunk of, of the last 12 months throughout the eastern and central US. Now, it doesn't mean that there weren't dry periods within this much larger wet period, but for the most part, the trend has been for trough development and storm development in this region. The other factor involved in these wetter than normal conditions was the major impact of Hurricane Florence on the Mid-Atlantic and the Carolinas, which dumped upwards of 30 inches or more of rain over southeastern North Carolina. These two influences playing a major role in the record wet last 12 months that we have seen. I'm just going to go ahead and revisit this graphic showing the five-day accumulated precipitation map for Hurricane Florence showing above 30 inches of rainfall in sections of southeastern North Carolina. One of the wettest storms ever to strike the U.S. and, and one of the wettest storms ever to strike this region of the U.S. with a massive rainfall shield inundating huge sections of the Mid-Atlantic. The other factor I just like to show visually has been this persistent dip in the jet stream that we have tended to see over the central and eastern U.S. drawing cool air down from the north, north and moisture up from the south, particularly from a warmer than normal Gulf of Mexico, much warmer than normal Atlantic Ocean off the U.S. East Coast and a warmer than normal Pacific Ocean, all feeding moisture into this trough pattern as instability is generated with cool air plunging down from the Arctic. And this has been a, a very persistent feature for the central and eastern U.S., setting off record floods in the central U.S., and across parts of the East throughout many months of the past 12 months with floods and inundation stories hitting the, the news on a very frequent basis. Now, these climate change, these impacts, these weather impacts come in the context of overall climate change and are influenced by overall climate change due to the overall warming influence on the hydrological cycle and also likely due to the overall influence of polar amplification in which the poles warm faster than the lower latitudes on mid-latitude jet stream patterns, which tend to generate more intense ridge patterns and more intense trough patterns. The more intense ridge patterns contributing to heat waves and droughts, the more intense trough patterns contributing to extreme weather and extreme rainfall. So these two factors helping to contribute to the wettest 12 month period that we have seen for the US in the entire 124 year record, but also contributing to the previous very dry period that preceded the wet period. Now, unfortunately with human caused climate change, we would expect to see the kind of extreme swings that we are seeing now between very wet and very dry conditions. And as the earth warms, that polarization will tend to amplify, particularly in the one to four degree Celsius warming range, beyond which you might actually get a tendency for just more stagnation and, and more, more drying in general. But, but at present, the overall trend in warming is, is for more extreme and more polarized weather conditions which of which the last 12 months sets sets another data point to to show that yes we are in a period of of increasing extremes so thank you for joining me and i'll be chatting with you soon